Welcome dear Academians! Today we will create this awesome looking gradient progress bar. As always you can find the source code in the description below. If you don't want to miss out on future educational content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Without further ado, let's get started. Open up your favorite editor and let's implement the HTML markup first. We'll start with the standard HTML boilerplate. I'll add a little title, but feel free to ignore this part. The strange looking things with the ampersand and the hash mark are HTML entities and they are representing emojis. Next I'll add the container for our progress bar. This will represent the empty progress bar and inside that I will create a div with id progress. We will use this div to fill out our progress container. Inside that I create an indicator div which will show the current progression in percentage. I'll add the control section with a start button for demonstration purposes. Let's link our styles.css file that we will create. Now I'll add the custom Google font called Poppins, which you can get from fonts.google.com. Select the font weights that you want to use and select the HTML code and paste it in your HTML documents head section. After this, it's time to include our index.js file. Create the styles.css and index.js file. If you have Node.js installed, Open up a terminal and type npx serve. It will host your website on localhost, but if you don't have Node.js, just open the index.html file in your browser. Now we'll make our site prettier. First I set up our newly added font for the whole page and set a dark background. And for the title I'll add some spacing and visual adjustments. If you save our changes and open up your browser and refresh, you'll see that we have a much nicer page. And here comes the interesting part. For the progress bar container, I will apply some styling, but the most important part is that we set position relative to it. And also don't forget to set some height for our container so it will be visible. Next we will add some styles to our actual progress bar that will grow as we progress. The important part here is that it should have equal height as our progress container, so we set it to 40 pixels and also we have to set position absolute on it so we can position it relatively to its parent and by assigning top 0 and left 0 on it we will perfectly place it on top of our container. For the background we will use a linear gradient and for that I will show you an awesome tool. Go to uigradients.com and select the gradient of your choice. There are a lot of awesome gradients on this site. If you found the one that you are willing to use, go and click on the little code icon and it will give you the CSS code right away. And also don't forget to set the width to 0% on our progress as we will start from 0. Next I'll add some styles to our indicator, set the height to 40 pixel and center it both vertically and horizontally using Flexbox. I'll also add some styles to our controls and start button, but they are not important for the progress bar, so feel free to copy it from the repository. If you hit save and open up our page, you can see it looks much nicer now. Now we will implement the heart of our progress bar in JavaScript. We will first start by creating start progress bar function and save references to both the progress and the indicator divs. Then we will set the width of our progress bar to an empty string which will actually set its width to 0% so this way when we will click the button it will always start from 0. Then we will call the setInterval function. It will take a function as a parameter and in its second parameter we can define time in milliseconds. SetInterval then we will call the function over and over again after the provided time until the interval gets cleared with clear interval. That's why we save it to progress interval, so we will be able to clear it and it won't cause an infinite loop and an infinitely growing progress bar. Then we will save the width of our progress into a width variable. Next we will check if width is falsy, so an empty string or zero. If so, we set the width of the progress bar to 1% and set the indicator text to 1%. This if statement will only run on our first interval call 
and this will initialize our progress bar. We call return at the end of the if statement because in this case we won't want the further codes to be executed. Next we will add an if statement to check whether the progress bar is completed. In this case we will clear the interval using the reference that we saved before into progress interval. Be sure to call the return statement here because if not the rest of the code will execute on our last function call and you will stop at 101%. In the last section of our function we will increment the progress width and the indicator text. The width itself is a string with the percentage value. So before we can modify it, we have to convert it to a number. First, we will have to get rid of the percentage sign. So we will use the string.split function and it will create two substrings in an array. And the first one at index zero, we will contain the string value, which is the number before the percentage sign. That's what we need for demonstration purposes. I made the start button work and console log our value. So if you save everything and open up the browser and hit the progress bar, you can see that the first element of the array contains the numeric value as a string. Now we will convert this string value into a valid integer using the parseInt function. If you want to work with fractions, you can also use the parse float function here. Now we have to increase this numeric width and apply it to the progress and indicator. I use it using template string literals. Lastly, we only have to add a click event listener to the start button and set start progress bar as its callback function. If you save everything and refresh your browser, after clicking the progress button, you will see your awesome gradient progress bar working. Congratulations.